What's going on, Yu-Gi-Oh players? Alex here, aka 95 bringing you guys a quick discussion. Uh, this is going to be more of a discussion, not only for Cliff Fort players, but just the game in general, um, on how I think you guys should approach something particularly against Cliff Forts, when that is Apocalypse Fort Towers, uh, definitely the bane of some players' existence. A lot of players just hate this card. A lot of players just hate Klee's in general. But I want to talk about why I think this card is just not very good, and pretty much the whole glass house concept of this, and why players should not be playing this. Uh, overall, the, the are playing Cliff Forts, whether it's the trap version or the dedicated tower turbo version with like wavering eyes, and even more so now because it's very strange for me. Like I went to Los Angeles Regionals the other week, and I saw not like I saw more cl uh, Cliff Forts playing the towers turbo version than I saw the trap version, and like that's probably like the like the complete hundred like hundred percent opposite of what I thought would happen, and like I'm not really too sure why players are doing that uh you know and there's several reasons number one is wavering eyes across the board is become significantly weaker and the reason i say that is is with the introduction of clown the clown engine we have a card called damage juggler as most of you guys probably should already know and damage juggler in the tcg can stop wavering eyes now i know in, at ycs mexico they incorrectly ruled it the damage juggler could not stop wavering eyes but the reality is he actually can stop it and you know in the tcg here in the u.s he is ruled that he can stop wavering eyes so, number one, that's another threat. The clowns are played in almost every deck that can support them, um, or should be playing them, that, that, make, that just, like, that actually improves the deck. For instance, Necros, you probably should be playing clowns. Shadals, a lot of them reply playing clowns. Uh, you know, just, just a lot of decks are actually just utilizing them. And Damage Juggler is probably one of the better ones, at least in my opinion, um, depending on what deck you're using and, you know, the, the, the text that you're using in the deck. But personally, I feel Damage Juggler is fantastic. And the fact that it makes a card like Wavering Eyes... Uh, a lot weaker, especially if you have it, is just huge because Wavering Eyes often is, you know, it's the trump card for the deck. It's not so much Towers, it's it's Wavering Eyes because it's the card that helps you go off and actually establish your win condition uh, with Towers. So, I mean, if you just, if you have like a really mediocre hand and you just put two scales, one that isn't Scout, for instance, um, whether they're oddball scales or regular scales, like one and nine or two nines or two ones, and you're just trying to Wavering Eyes out of it, and it's even worse if you have the same scale because you because you didn't draw that well initially, and they damage juggler you. You're pretty much locked out of the game until you draw another wavering eyes, and by then it could just be well like the game could just be over. But even more so, the thing is the reason why I feel like you shouldn't be playing towers and why I just feel like it's not very great is all the top decks like whether it's whether it's necros or clown necros or you know tellers or shadals. I feel like every deck actually has a real out to towers. Um, and relatively consistently, like, if you look at it, like, if a deck doesn't have necessarily a main deck out, for instance, Necros, they all pretty much run Decisive Armor, like, you should be running Decisive Armor. Decisive Armor is a searchable out to towers. If 50, if let's just say, uh, you know, a 50% of the field is Necros, that means that every single Necros player you play has a built-in main deck out that they can search at will against towers, and usually you're going to lose if you don't like if you don't have a real follow-up after towers and if you're forced to run double towers because you're afraid of that to hopefully try and drop a second towers after they have the first one like you're probably just gonna be bricking more often than not and the, the concept behind towers is like towers can like at least in my opinion towers can win you games but it won't win you tournaments if that makes sense like yeah i'm sure there's some tower turbo variant people that have you know maybe top like regionals or gone undefeated regionals or local but like i mean like a genuine tournament like like nationals or you know YCS or something like something huge like that like a real premier event that's why you don't really see too many decks like this winning those types of events is because of the glass house concept where like you're pretty much putting all your eggs into one basket and that being towers and if your opponent outs it uh you just lose and another thing more so than this is like decks that don't have built-in answers like you know like necros like I said have decisive armor um, and a lot of the clown decks that have damage juggler for your wavering eyes, assuming, you know, you have it. That, this will probably happen less likely, but, um, obviously decisive armor, like I said, is searchable. But the decks that don't necessarily have, like, an immediate answer to towers, they're probably going to have something in the extra deck in the form of, you know, something like Diamond Crab King, which you probably should be playing if you don't, if you aren't playing Necros, or you don't have, like, an immediate answer to, uh, towers himself. And he's so easy to make. The fact that your extra deck... Um, like, the fact that you can have an out to a win condition in the game that, like, there's actually just zero outs to except running it over, or very, like, specific niche cards, um, and you can just bring it out for free anytime you want as long as you have two rank fours, it's just, you know, it's huge, like, you can't overlook that, 
And the fact is, like, if you look at something like, let's say, Tellers, I mean, for I haven't really looked at the recent, like, Teller deck list, like, pure Tellers, but I'm pretty sure a majority of them still also run Excalibur, and Hero Champion Excalibur, that is, and, and he's an out to this as well. So, I mean, whether it's Diamond Crab King, Excalibur, you know, whatever, um, even Rhapsody, for God's sakes, I've seen people that, you know, I know Rhapsody, can, like, people don't understand the whole thing with Rhapsody, you just have to put anything that's 2500 or bigger as an exceed on the board and then you make Rhapsody and then you just equip Rhapsody to the other exceed that's 2500 or bigger. And the reason I say 2500 or bigger is because Towers will decrease his attack by 500. So he'll be at 2000. Rhapsody increases its attack by 1200, right? Actually, so technically it could be um it could be 2300. As long as you have a 2300 monster on the field and a Rhapsody, um even if your monster goes to 1800 because of Towers, the Rhapsody will increase it by 1200, so it'll be at 3000 and at least enough to crash with the towers. So, in general, I feel like towers, number one, aside from like inconsistency and everything, all the top decks have some actual out, whether it be in the form of an extra deck card or main deck cards that can either hinder something like Wavering Eyes or immediately just out it, is, is just huge. And in some cases, you'll see a combination of both. Like, Necros, for instance, a lot of players are, you know, running Diamond Crab King and they're running, you know, you know, all this. Like, they're obviously running the Clowns, they're probably running the Decisive Armor. So they have even more so outs. And if over half the field is that, and you're playing in a 10-round event, and half those rounds you're playing against those decks that have those immediate outs to your Glass House win condition, your, your you know, win-loss ratio is probably going to be pretty mediocre after, like, round 3, 4, or even just throughout the day if you play all the rounds, so... Uh, I just want to throw that out there why, why I don't really feel like Towers is very good. Like I said, it's a glass house concept. Sometimes it looks nice, you know, from the outside. It looks great. You can you can win a couple games here or there, but ultimately it likely won't win you um, a premier event, and it won't bring you a ton of victories that you felt you should have deserved, but every other deck has a higher ceiling. So not only are you playing a deck that, like, has a, is a, has a glass house win condition, but you also have a glass ceiling. And if you guys have ever studied psychology or sociology and you understand that whole concept of like glass ceiling and everything, um, it pretty much means that like, like your deck hits a peak and you can't really do much beyond that. Whereas every other deck can go above that peak and then they can just like look down at you and just like laugh at you because they can out your, they can out your win condition and they can just do so much more. So uh, I, I'm not just saying Necros in general. I'm not saying Shadows. I'm not saying like, like, I just mean a lot of other decks can do so much more than, you know, the Towers Turbo variants. And, like, the Trap version, you should just be focused on, like, outing people with Floodgates more so than anything else. There's no reason to be trying to dedicate to Towers when your Floodgates are probably accomplishing the same thing as your Towers and winning you the game. Um, in most cases, like, if you have enough Floodgates and your opponent has less outs than, than you do Floodgates, you're probably going to win anyway. So, and I think the Trap version is just across the board more consistent. It may not be as fast, but I feel it's just more consistent. So... Um, this isn't really like a tip video for Clifford players. This is just my synopsis on why I think Towers is just not very good. So, uh, yeah, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Uh, I was very busy today, so this is the only video I can get you guys up for the day today. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Check out my other videos. Subscribe if you already haven't. Like this video. Uh, it really helps the channel grow. And, uh, yeah, be sure to check out my Facebook, my Twitter, my Instagram, my Facebook fan page. All that stuff will be down below in the description of this video. You guys can get a hold of me. Um, I've started school, so that means I just have a ton of reading. Like, I have to read, like, God knows how long today. And today's actually Tuesday. When you, no, yeah, today's Tuesday when you guys are watching this video. So, I have a ton of reading. I just started school. So, uh, yeah, pardon me if some of the videos are either longer, shorter, or just not as content-filled as normal. So, um, if you guys have any, like, discussion videos or cool little text that you want me to discuss or, you know, things moving forward, drop them in the comments down below. Be sure to do them, so... See you guys tomorrow, and remember, duelists, limits like fears are often just an illusion. See you next time, guys.